And so like I walk, I was walking to uh, Chow lunch and one of the guards, the female guards walked by me and she was like, give me a weird look. And I was like, what's up? And she's like, are you, you're getting out today? And I was like, no. And she's like, well, the president just tweeted about you on TV and said that you're leaving. And uh, I was like, what the fuck? I was like, are you serious? She's like, yeah. So by the end of that day, man, they, they fucking came in. They were like, prisoner Gallagher, stand up. I'm like, you're out of here. And uh, I, so this is the, this is the crazy part. All he tweeted was to get me out. He's like, get him out of confinement so he can properly defend himself for trial. Didn't say like he's guilty or not guilty. Um, he just said because of his prior service, he, you know, he has the right to a fair he has trial. The right to a fair trial. Um, the command Rosenblum, <laughs> I get let out of the brig, like not even let out. I, I'm like checking out. They sent an MA down there. Um, and pretty much took me from the brig and then threw me in a, uh, barracks room with like restriction on steroids or I wasn't allowed out of the room. I wasn't allowed a TV. I wasn't, I wasn't allowed anything. I was like, I was still in the brig, still had to be in the same uniform and I had to get escorted if I wanted to go eat cuffed and everything. No, no cuffs. That was the one, like I just, but I just sat, you know, sat in that room for an extra month and a half. So it was nine months in prison. It was no, it was uh, seven and a half months in prison, and then okay. a month and a half in this room. But the judge ended up uh, adding that on to my. He was like, "You guys." He pretty much told the command. He was like, "What you guys are doing to him is confinement, just like the brig." Like, so he just added that on to my. He's like, "He's pretty much served nine months in the brig from because it was ridiculous." I mean, the command my. My family would try and come visit me. This is when I was in the barracks. They would command would deny them. Like my wife and kids, um, be like, "No, you can't see him unless we we say you can during these hours." So it was pretty much like I was still locked up. Uh, just now, it was almost I don't want to say worse, but it was like I was by myself in a room. Now I wasn't seeing anybody. You know, um, they had a a guard on post outside my door at all times. Um, yeah, it was, stu- it was just stupid. Talk about the phone call. From the president? No, they brought you a phone to make a call that had no service. Oh, yeah. So um, we threw, we had to throw, we had to <clears throat> put together a complaint when we back to court saying that um, what the Commodore and the admiral were doing to me was tantamount to confinement and that I still, I basically, they weren't following the president's orders. I still wasn't allowed to talk to my legal team. I still, I had no, no communication with anybody. So therefore how could I properly defend myself? Uh, so the judge told the prosecution, like <laughs> he said, uh, I'm not ordering you to do this because I can't, but I suggest you guys get him a phone so he can contact his lawyers. and. So the command shows up about a week later, not, took their time, and they're like, here, here's your phone. It was like some, you know, 1994, like, Samsung uh, that had no service. They locked. I, I could only call my lawyer and my wife and, I think, my brother. Um, you know, I wasn't allowed to dial anything else out, but which didn't matter because the phone had no service. So... They gave that she the command jag gave that to me, and then they gave me a laptop with no internet, <laughs> no nothing. And uh, they're like, "You can't have this laptop in your room. We're gonna." Lo-. They locked it in another room in the barracks. So if I wanted to go use it to go look at any evidence, I had to have a whoever they had from the command watching me, standing over me, watching or like watching me do this, which is a violation in itself. You know, I'm looking at my own trial stuff. Like, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> we brought that up to them after they gave me the phone. I brought it up to uh, the command. Actually, the the jag that gave it to me. I was like, "Hey, my phone doesn't have any service." And she just looked at me and she's like, "Too bad," and walked off. I mean, they knew what they were doing. Yeah. Uh, they were just blo- I mean, 
they were blocking me from being able to defend myself at every turn. And it wasn't until um, the prosecution finally got caught uh, cheating and spying is where I was let out of confinement. Um, that was the judge's remedy. So they, the, um, as soon as Tim and Mark and all them got together as a legal team, um, the prosecution sent them an email. This is uh, Chaz Plack was the prosecutor. Um, and on that email, it was just some random email too. It wasn't nothing of like significant importance, but on there was a tracking beacon at the bottom. Um, it's like an embedded virus. And luckily my Tim, my lawyer caught it um, because he had a case two cases ago that dealt with the, the same thing. And he saw it and he emailed back and was like, tell me this isn't what I think it is. And got no response from the prosecutor. He was like, dude, they looked into it, found out it was spy. Like they yeah. sent them spyware. So that became a whole nother like side issue of my trial. So then we had to bring that up. Like this is violating I don't know how many of my rights. Uh, was that in a, was it, so that beacon, was that an attempted breach or yeah. did they breach? No, they didn't. It was, so if he would have clicked on that beacon, it would have been, been a full breach. What what did the beacon look like? It was the symbol for the, um, the RSL, the, the uh, pretty much the, the command that the, that the prosecution falls under. It's their okay. symbol. Uh, but there's something like about it that Tim was like, this isn't right. Uh, and yeah, it turned out the prosecutor sent that beacon to my whole legal team, including all, you know, my civilian lawyers. Um, the lawyers that were representing my OIC, uh, the Navy Times, because the Navy Times had just started writing articles that were actually looking good for me because that the Navy Times was... Uh, his name is Carl Prine, who was writing all the articles. He started doing some digging of his own into what was going on and started finding out the truth. Like this is, <laughs> these dudes are fucking lying. And he started writing articles that, you know, insinuating or saying like, Hey man, this is, maybe this isn't what we think it is. And the prosecution didn't like that. Um, so they sent them a tracking beacon as well. So that's to the media. Now we're violating the media's rights. Um, so it became a real big deal. Um, and we thought that, I mean, it was a good chance the case was going to be thrown out over that uh, because in a civilian court, it would have been thrown out hands down. Um, but their remedy was they, and this was a complete surprise. Um, this was pretty much an awesome day. Um, we went in just to talk about <clears throat> the spying caper and all that stuff. And uh, at the end of the, that day, the judge like so nonchalantly was just like, all right. Um, you know, due to the fact that I think you violated some of his rights, I'm just, I'm letting Eddie Gallagher go free or out of confinement. And it was like, I couldn't, I was like, what the fuck? And my wife was like, and she like jumped up screaming, like, you know, and that was it. I got to go be with my family until trial. Um, which trial was like, I think at that point a month off, um, but that was a that, that was a big day, like just to be able to go see my wife and kids. Um, I went and flew home, you know, for like two days, and then came back, and all we did was prep for trial from that point on. So you go to trial, and you need to explain to all of America how an entire fucking SEAL team, or actually an entire SEAL community, is turned against you, and you need to prove your innocence. Mm -hmm. I mean. Were you ready to do that if at that point? Were you confident that? It yeah. Uh, I mean, I had confidence in my legal team. Uh, you know, I knew, I knew they had, they had done their due diligence. I mean, they worked their asses off all the way up to trial preparing for it. Um, and I, like, I knew the, I had the truth on my side. I yeah. mean, that's what I, I was like, dude, I have, God and the truth on my side and I'm going into it with that mindset and uh because at, at that point so much corrupt shit had happened uh, I was like 
I would definitely wasn't putting any faith in the justice system or like that they yeah. were going to do right by me. So I just had to have faith, you know, in God that it was going to work out. And then I trusted my legal team. I had full trust in them. Um, and so we went into it with that attitude. I mean, it was like we were every day I went to trial was like going into like an almost like an op. You know, how many days was the trial? Oh, it was like two and a half weeks. Two and a half weeks every day. Yeah. It was, uh, it was nuts. Um, you know, it's, and it's not like anything you see out of a few good men or yeah. rules of engagement. Like the, the courtroom's not, you know, made of rich mahogany wood. And like, it's, it, dude, it's a piece of shit courtroom, like shitty carpeting, like nothing. There's barely any room for, uh, people in the back and, they fill those seats with media. Those are the first people that fled in. And then any supporters I had were told to like wait outside or, you know, they put like an extra room for them somewhere else. I mean, I barely, thank God they let my mom and dad and wife in there and yeah. my brother. Uh, that's when I got the uh, phone call from the president. Uh, I was coming back from Florida, back to San Diego. And I landed in San Diego and I uh, got a, te a call from my lawyer saying, hey, if there's a weird phone number that comes up, pick it up. And uh, I was like, why? And he's like, just do it. And I was like, all right. And sure enough, it was one. I think I said it was from Egypt. <laughs> and so I picked it up. And yeah, it was the uh, president of the United States and the vice president um, on the phone. And uh, they he called and was like, listen, um, I'm calling to tell you that you're, I'm, I'm going to let you retire or I'm, you're going to retire as a chief uh, with everything that you've earned over the past 20 years. Cause uh, the punishment they had tried to give me is I was going to retire as a E1. In E1? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's what I don't think anybody really knows is because they had thrown the book at me and they sentenced me to uh, four months in the brig, which I'd already served almost triple that uh, or over twice that. Um, but because you get that four months, that's automatic reduction to E1. Um, and so I would have, it would have been like 20 years never existed. Yeah. Um, so he was like, that's not happening. Um, I'm letting you retire as a chief and uh, with everything that you've earned, you know, and then he talked to me about, I mean, this, he knew more about my case than, I think most people like he knew all the intricacies of everything that had happened. Um, all the crap the prosecution had pulled. I mean, he was disgusted by it. And he yeah. was like, you know, he's like, we don't treat our war fighters like this. He's like, this is not, not while I'm president, you know, he's like, we don't throw away our war fighters. Uh, and he's like, so I'm going to, you know, thank you for your service. And I'm going to let you out with, or let you get out with everything that you earned. Um, and then he, you know, really made a bunch of remarks about my wife, how amazing she is and how why she's a reason that he was even involved. Um, that he was, he was like, she's a remarkable person to watch, uh, fight, you know, he's like, I forget what he said. He said, uh, you know, she stands, she's a good salesman. She stands by her product and she's like, that product is you, you know? And so, Talked to him and both the vice president. Just I, I was you know in shock. You know what are you going to say? To them? Yeah. Both on the phone. I just sat there and listened to them and thanked them over and over. And um, yeah. So that, they were going to pull your seal trident. Well, too. that's so. After I get off the phone with them, I go into work the next day and I go right to trade it where I'm banned from. I drive right on. I'm like, dude, fuck this. I walk in and I'm like. Hey, I want my paper. Like all, I, all I wanted was my paperwork to put my retirement in, which they were not giving me. I go up to the uh, third deck, walk into the admin, and uh, it would you would have thought I walked in with a shotgun. I mean, it was all admin people in there, and they all like stop what they're doing. And they're like, oh my gosh! And I literally was like, hey, I just need this, this, and this, and I'll be out of here, you know. And they were like, oh, you know, they're all helpful. They're like, definitely, and. The master chief of trade it comes walking out, <clears throat> sees me, and uh, it was so awkward. He was like, oh, what's up? And I was like, 
hey, how's it going? And he's like, oh. And then he walks back in his office and shuts the door. And I'm like, okay. Comes out about 30 seconds later, completely different demeanor, like bowed up, gets in my face and is like, who gave you authority to even come in here? Like, you're not like just being a complete douchebag. And he's like, you're not allowed in here. I don't know what you think you, you know, what makes you think you can walk up in here? And I just turned and looked at him and was like, you know, he, cause he said, who gave you the authority to come here? And I looked at him and was like, the president of the United States, when he called me yesterday, I was like, get the fuck out of my face. He looked, his face was like, and he like walked back into his office and I, I like, I had it at that point. I was like, dude. Yeah. Fuck you. Fuck all of you guys. Um, I was like, in my paperwork. I mean, the, the admin people were cool. I had no problem with them. But just him and then the CEO of Trade Deck comes walking out. This is literally this happened. I turn, he comes walking out of his office, looks at me, and then goes back in his office and shuts the door. <laughs> like, these are grown ass Navy SEALs that we're talking about here. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, are we like, really? You know, but. Either way, I, I left there. I didn't go back. I just got everything I needed. Um, and uh, I go back to supply to put in for retirement, and I get notified <laughs> by Group 1. They call me. They're like, oh, uh, yeah, you're not. You can't put that in because now we're going to take you to China Review Board, and we're pulling your bird. Um, Man, they just wouldn't fucking oh, allow it to you go. Couldn't make, you couldn't make it up. I literally sat down with the Group 1 Master Chief, and – had to have like I tried to have like this heart to heart talk with him. I'm like, dude, I get it. You guys are coming after me. Like I'm public enemy number one. I was like, but do you know what this looks like? Like the president just said I could retire and just let me go. And now you're coming after me again. I was like, this looks like you're giving the middle finger to the president of the United States. And I was like, you do understand that. And he was like, no, no, no. That's that's not what we're doing. I was like, okay. I'm like, that's what it's going to look like. But I, I welcomed, they were like, you're going to go to the Trident Review Board. And I welcomed it. I was like, fine. I was like, I'll go. I was like, because that is the first and only time you guys have ever offered to hear my side of the story. And if it has to be in front of a Trident Review Board, and I, I'm able to talk to a bunch of senior enlisted and give my side, I welcome it. I was like, even though I already know there's a predetermined outcome that you guys are going to pull my bird. But if that's what it takes, you know, and uh, I went and reviewed. So when you have a trying to review board, you can go and review the evidence uh, beforehand to see what they're going to you know, bring up. And I was going to trial all over again. I mean, it literally was like I had never been to trial. They were just like all the charges again, um, which I was like, OK, but uh Literally the next day, the president steps in again and tweets. I wake up to a tweet that said, you will not be taking his trident. Uh, get back to work. Like, <laughs> dude, I mean, and so I walk into work the next day and I'm like, you know, what are you going to do now? You know, what's and uh, they told me they were like, oh, no, no, we're still pulling your trident. And I was like, okay, you know, I I don't know where this is going, but it's like, it's not going to end. I mean, you're going up against the president, yeah. which that's on you, you know, but they, they never ended up doing it. They tried. Um, and uh, we ended up fighting back pretty hard to where they, they were going to take my trident, my TU commander's trident, my OIC's trident, um, anybody that testified on my behalf. They were just going to pull all their tridents. Um, but they ended, it, it all ended up getting dropped. Wow. Yeah. But it was like that to the very last day uh, when I got my retirement ID. Just constant trying to, like, target me in some way. Man, that is fucking sad, dude. Yeah, it was super sad. Um, and it, the, the sad part is, like, watching the guys in the community um, who were not, you know, they were all coming up to me like, dude, this is bullshit you know like they were all on my side but they it was a very like looking over your shoulder type of 